today my topic will be food borne diseases these diseases are very common during the monsoon season because of contaminated water and food but uh, the contamination happens either by bacteria or by parasites or by fungi or by viruses or even industrial toxins and chemicals and heavy metallic compounds when the person ingests this knowingly or unknowingly what happens is that these toxic agents can invade the soft internal surface of the intestine and it can cause local disease or it is also possible that it might enter into the blood stream and either go into the liver quite often it happens because of amebiasis which are protozoa or it may go into the blood stream causing sepsis patients you know the incubation period generally would be about 6 uh, hours to 3 days and sometimes it could be even a longer duration of months also now the commonest diseases that can happen will be acute gastroenteritis or only diarrhea or cholera or shigellosis botulism and uh, typhoid fever viral hepatitis and various other manifestations which are innumerable now initially what the patient happens is that whenever the infection happens the patient may present with acute vomiting fever diarrhea abdominal pain cramps cramps in the legs extreme weakness and then if the toxins are serious enough then the person might go into sepsis and a very bad clinical status which requires a hospitalization now the diarrhea can be watery or it can be semi solid with blood and mucus and quite often there will not be too frequent stools but the patient could be still very ill now generally what happens is that when this happens the patient becomes miserable patient becomes restless unable to take the food or fluids and may require may develop dehydration and may require fluids in a larger quantity now the actual the treatment will be the diagnosis would be done by either a blood count urine examination stool examination routine finding out the bacteria the parasites protozoa etc or even the stool culture and also one should do the electrolytes to know the sodium and potassium levels as well as creatinine to see the kidney status the main complication will be the dehydration acute kidney failure sepsis and toxemia hypotension etc now the uh, the patient should be treated with enough fluids oral fluids if it is possible and we call this as ors which replaces the electrolytes and the patient should also get symptomatic treatment for the pain fever etc for nausea and vomiting along with sometimes antibiotics anti parasitic agents you know parasites could be the round worms tape worms thread worms or whatever it is these uh, antihelminthic treatment as well as antifungal antiviral etc antiviral treatment of course is very much limited now whenever the person has these kind of infections he can prevent it by certain measures these measures include good hygiene maintenance checking of the you know the cleaning of the utensils the kitchen platform the hand wash and then see that he does not consume date expiry food sources you know like say tetra packs or any other canned food he should also see that the food is boiled properly or heated properly and if those those are some vegetables which are not heated he should see that they are cleaned thoroughly and properly and the other way is that whenever you have a food source like say meat or eggs or fish etc if you come to know that this is does not look like to be fresh or stored for a long time it is better to avoid them street food is another which can also cause this kind of problems and can avoid and jaundice etc can happen due to a contaminated food and water which is mainly the fecal material and of course fecal material of a contaminated human being birds animals anything could cause a acute gastrointestinal symptom 
and one should it is always better prevention than the treatment thank you very much